Hi, my name is Kizal from Five Pines Training and Consultancy, and this will be my next week financial workflow part two. Now, the first thing I want to go to is the allocation and amortization schedule. So let's go down to the navigation portlet. From the navigation portlet, we will be able to go to the amortization and allocation schedule so now let's look at the allocation schedule first so from the allocation schedule you can see here these are my allocations let's go into one of them the uh, rent click view and you will be able to see your allocation so this is my name my allocation for the subsidiary the frequency the date date of the subsequent date down here the source the destination of the allocation and the history of the allocation means the journal entry created so this is for allocation schedule and you have one called a fixed allocation where the allocation is fixed it's a fixed amount the other one is a dynamic allocation where for example you have uh, allocation based on headcount so if your headcount increase allocation will increase as well next I want to go to is the amortization schedule so the amortization schedule here this again this is the list of amortization I have now I want to go into the annual people insurance so once you go in here again the name you can see created from this view you can always drill down the template standard uh, type now this is by straight line by even periods the amortization period start and end date whether is it completed or not uh, total amount amortized you know it's already fully amortized and the amount of the whole bill down here is the journal entry created for this amortization and on the right here it's your bill that the amortization comes from all right so now this is allocation and amortization go back to my dashboard so from my dashboard what i want to go to is the exchange rate which is just on top here let me click on all three now for next week they have over 190 different currencies so the currency here you can see our base currency and the source currency where it will be have a exchange rate this exchange rate will be updated daily by NetSuite you can also add in new currencies if required for next is the unrealized and realized gain and loss you can see here the unrealized gain for the subsidiary the transaction number date type and then the unrealized posting period then you can see the exchange rate and why there is this uh, unrealized gain or loss it will be the same for realized gain and loss except the only thing as his name says that uh, one is already realized and the other one is uh, unrealized because it hasn't been uh, done yet the transactions okay so next after the exchange I want to go to fixed asset so fixed asset you can see here first the transaction you can create you can create your asset, you can do depreciation, revaluation required, depos disposal, split, transfer, or proposal. So over here you can create uh, the asset, then if you need to, then they will help you do depreciation. After you set up the depreciation, if you need revaluation of asset, then you can do it here as well. So what I want to go through now is the list of assets. So the list of assets here, you can see is your ID number, name, the description of your asset, the asset type, furniture, fixtures, uh, original cost, current cost, straight line method, and uh, the period. 
net book value and the cumulative value whether is it still depreciating and quantity one so over here you get your whole asset listing and you can see the breakdown of each assets so let's click on view and then once you click on view you will be able to see the ID name of your asset description if you have serial number if you have a parent asset you have a drop for this asset you have any residual value your accounting method your depreciation period by month and then your status because it's still currently depreciating and then down here you can see first you can put in notes then you can put files you can attach files here <coughs> you can have your workflow so if you have a different workflow for this asset you can put it in this is the general information for your asset, the power class location, your his, uh, subsidiary. You can also edit any information here if it's uh, required. But if not, then you can see here, this is all the general information. Next is the account. So this is where the asset accounts go to, the pressure asset and the write-off. If you have any lease, lease information here, same with insurance and maintenance. And also your tax method, if you have a specific tax method for this asset, you can put it here. If it's, uh, there's any disposal, and you can see your depreciation history. So this is the depreciation history for this asset. This is a general entry created. Okay, then the asset usage, sub asset, and the income. And expense okay so this is the overview for fixed asset next go back to my dashboard I want to go to journals inter specifically intercompany and the regular journal let me look into the regular journal first so you can see here this is my journal number if it's in the different currency I put it here and I have to choose my subsidiary as well and the uh, date and the posting period down here memo and the uh, creator from which transaction if it is applicable you can also change the form for specific journals down here there's the line so I can put in my, my journal line here so forever account that I need to make the journal for I can always key in over here then the next one I want to show you this is journal so what's the difference with journal and internal company journal intercompany journal here you have your subsidiary as well but there's a change down here where you have to show to which subsidiary so for example is the US 1 to US 2 so this journal entry will affect from US 1 and US 2 so this is the intercompany journal that's, so that's the main difference now next I want to show you is the band reconciliation so how to go to band reconciliation let me go back sorry here yep I want to leave so I'll go here band reconcile so the bank reconciliation you can see here account cash account operating account one so if this i will use this as an example but if it's your bank account you can always change so put here your statement date the ending balance the start date and then down here when you start you just reconcile items so take all the reconcile items you might as reconcile and then once you're done you can just save and this is how you reconcile your bank statement easily okay you can also one thing you can do is to import your bank statement so once you import your bank statement into NetSuite then you'll be able to do this reconciliation a lot quicker and faster okay next i want to show you is the tax report 
So for the text report, I have to change roles. So report, I have to go to my administrator role to show you. So now back to my admin. I want to show you is the VAT reports, VAT GST. Yep, tax report. Okay, so that while it loads, so what I want to see is the UK one, United Kingdom. So while you load, let me show you quickly uh, the subsidiary setup. So this is the setup company, company info, and subsidiary setup is down here. is company down here subsidiary okay so this is the overview of the subsidiaries if you have subsidiary you can see here this is the subsidiary have whether you need elimination between subsidiaries or not and then what you can do is you can create a new subsidiary so it's like I want to create a new subsidiary put the name subsidiary of which company put in the information like the tax taxonomy reference date uh, number the document number legal name address uh, facts whether is it for elimination what language once you key in here you save you will be able to create your new subsidiary now let's go back to the tax it's already loaded so here this is my UK tax so you can see here I can have a Tax, international tax report so if I subsidiary in different countries I can view their tax return in their specific country of, due to the updates in the tax report for NetSuite so you can see here this is for this period and uh, my VAT returns okay so this is for tax reports and finally, what I want to show you is the company information for company information. You go to setup and then you go to company, click on company information. You come here, company name. This is the legal name of the company. If I have any logo, I can put the logo in, whether I want it to be only internal or external. This is the any identification number, social credit number the tax this is the state and then any email address so this is basically my overview for part two thank you